What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and achieving at least one of your goals today. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 2023 Nissan Altima SR. Huge thank you to James Kim over at Priority Nissan here in Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Altima SR or any Nissan product, I'll be sure to have James's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It has been a hot one here today. I did a Nissan Titan video right before this one and I really struggled with that video. It was hot. The sun was beating directly down on me, uh, but it's been a few hours since that video. The sun is at a different location. It definitely feels just a little bit better. Plus, I did one video, so now I'm not quite as rusty as I was, like I mentioned in that last video. Took a couple weeks off, but now I'm back in full force to do some videos for you guys. So just like I always do, first, let's talk about the exterior and the performance. So, like I said, this is a 2023 Nissan Altima SR, and this particular one has been painted in the new for 2023 gray sky pearl paint, which kind of looks like a Nardo gray, uh, and it's just a really, really nice color, especially on the SR trim level. Now, also for 2023, the Altima as a whole did get a refreshed interior and exterior with updated front fascia, new paint colors, and a larger infotainment screen on the interior, which we'll get into as we progress along in this video. But with the SR trim level, you get LED projector headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and some black chrome trim just beneath your headlights. So you can see right here, it's kind of like a boomerang shape i guess you could say all of that is black chrome and it really accents the gloss black trim pieces very very nicely especially here on the gray sky pearl paint so working our way to the center of the front end with the sr trim level you get a sinister gloss black mesh like grill with an updated nissan logo at the center of the front grill so you may be able to tell the uh, Nissan as a whole, they updated their logo for the 2023 model year. And then just to the right of that is where you will find your orange SR lettering. Now, one thing that's also pretty cool is that at the bottom of your front grille, you get kind of have like this gloss black lower lip just to give it the appearance that you kind of have like a splitter up here uh, when you really don't, but it just gives it that type of appearance. And then you get gloss black lower outer grills on each side with some uh, satin black at the center of both of those. Again, just to kind of accent the front grille nicely, and it just gives it a more sporty appearance. I love the 2023 redesign. I think they did a great job. My only gripe, or maybe this isn't quite a gripe, but I think it's just kind of interesting, is that when I first saw this, I thought that the panel gap was totally wrong because you can see there's a little bit of like an overhang right here. So I can fit my finger literally underneath the hood there. And I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, is it like that on this side? And it is like that on this side as well. So I thought it was just like the panel gap was totally off, uh, but it is like that on both sides. So it's just kind of an interesting styling cue that uh, I don't know quite how I feel about it because you can't really tell unless you get up close to it, but it's something that, you know, I thought a prospective buyer may want to know before they went out and checked one of these out uh, here in person. Now, also a couple things to do with the SR trim level. Basically what you get with the SR is a sport tuned suspension as well as these 19 inch gloss black wheels with the machine face. And these wheels are wrapped in 23540 Bridgestone Taranza tires. Give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires real quick. Um, this thing rides super, super sporty. So it does have the sport tuned suspension and you can tell it has the sport tuned suspension but it's not too bumpy which is something that i like but it definitely handles better around uh turns and stuff than some of the other trim levels like the sv for example but just behind your wheel and tire setup this particular one has been optioned with the 245 dollars splash guards but one more thing i wanted to mention that has to do with the wheels is that with the sr trim level you can see kind of the sr embossed into this black part on the wheel I think that is a very, very nice touch, and that would definitely sway me towards getting the SR trim level because it looks freaking sweet and it handles very well as well. I just might want to get the VC Turbo one. This one is not that. But moving into the side view mirrors with the SR trim level, you get gloss black mirror caps, and as standard, they are power adjustable and manual folding. And then I thought I might mention this now because why not? It's kind of in the same uh, location as the mirror, but on the inside, 
right here this is where you'll find your blind spot monitoring and about right there on again on the inside is where you'll find your blind spot monitoring blind spot monitoring does come standard with the sr trim level now another thing i wanted to say uh, is that at the top of your windows you get black window trim but then at the bottom of the windows you get some chrome window trim you also get body color door handles with keyless access just keep in mind that the keyless access function is only on your front two doors so it's that little button right there the rear two doors do not get the keyless access function get your little body color antenna up top here and then on your c pillar you kind of have like this floating black trim piece just to kind of separate the lower and the upper halves of this vehicle it's kind of interesting and i noticed that they do this on the rogue and on the pathfinder as well so again that's just like a gloss black trim piece that kind of goes nicely into the bottom piece of glass just something i thought i might point out now let's do a little rear three-quarter angle of this thing again this thing from the front to the back i think looks really really good and you can see those two pretty expressive body lines one right there and then the other one that kind of goes down uh, i think that just gives it again a really aggressive and sporty look to it one thing that's also interesting uh, is that you do not get a capless filler neck and you actually have to open up the fuel door here from the interior so you pop this right here it's kind of like you're popping your hood but you're really just popping open your fuel door again no capless filler neck and 87 octane will do you just fine you get a rear window defroster you get a black taillight bezel that's a closer look at that this particular one has been optioned with the 420 dollar rear spoiler and this is a must-have option in my opinion if you guys are going to get the sr trim level you can see it's kind of like a ducktail spoiler and once you get close to your nissan logo it kind of looks interesting right there uh, but again i think that just adds again to the sportiness of the sr trim level so it's a 420 dollar option i know that's a lot of money but you know, if you are looking for an Altima and you want the sporty looking one, that's an option you might want to consider getting. Then your Altima lettering and your Nissan badge are both in a matte gray type of color. And then you have your SR badging on the right hand side or the upper right hand side of your trunk. If you want to open up your trunk, you can either do it from the interior, you can do it from the key fob, or you can just put your hand under here, feel for this little pad, and that will pop open the trunk. And then just to the left of that is where you'll find your backup camera. The backup camera does come standard, obviously, on the SR. After 2018, the US mandated that every single consumer vehicle have a backup camera. Now, there are a couple options back here, and uh, a couple of those options being this has the $365 package that includes floor mats, a trunk mat, hideaway nets, and dual trunk hooks. What I mean by the dual trunk hooks, these things right here. You got one there, you got one on this side as well. So let's say you go to the grocery store, you can put like three bags, uh, grocery bags on this side, three grocery bags on this side, and then the same thing over here. So you get six on this side, six on this side, or you can overload them and you know load as many as you want to really. Uh, I always think that's a really, really cool option. This one also has the $195 trunk organizer tray that includes a first aid kit and an emergency road kit. So this is the emergency road kit. That's the first aid kit. And then that is the trunk organizer right there. I believe you can move it to your liking. That's a pretty cool thing. Here are your floor mats. They say Altum SR on them and they kind of get that uh, like orange accent uh, color stitching on the outsides of the floor mats themselves. And then all the way down here is where you will find your spare tire. You also have your jack and stuff, but your spare tire is all the way down uh, at the bottom of the trunk, if that is something you guys were wondering. Uh, but really, that's kind of about it for what we got going on, at least on the inside of the trunk. There is one more option I wanted to point out, and that is that this does have the $165 chrome bumper protector. So essentially, if you guys are you know loading up your trunk with your carry-on suitcase, your suitcase backpacks, or something like that, instead of scratching like the paint, you would be scratching this pro, uh, chrome bumper protector, which is literally made to get scratched. So that might be an option. You might want to consider if you're specking one of these out yourselves. Again, this one comes with that option, uh, as you may be able to tell. It's a little back shot or rear shot of the Ultima SR coming down just a bit more as standard with the sr you get four backup sensors that's one three and four again they're all about right here and then coming in just a little bit more so you guys get a better view of what i'm talking about this piece all right here 
is all satin black. You get two reflectors, one there, one there, and then all of this here is a gloss black rear valence. As you may be able to tell, you get a couple of those fins, and then you also get a dual exhaust system with the SR. I love the way that this thing looks. I think it looks super sleek, and in my opinion, I think it looks a lot better than the 2022 and below Altimas. But again, that's a subjective opinion. Let me know what you guys think of the look in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments, but let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals that 2.5 liter inline four cylinder that makes 188 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an Xtronic continuously variable transmission for a zero to 60 time in 7.4 seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 37 miles per gallon on the highway for 31 miles per gallon combined with front wheel drive. Now, you can get this same vehicle with all-wheel drive, with the same motor. However, you know, fuel economy is going to lack a little bit. Or if this is not enough power for you, but you still like the look of the SR, you can get the VC Turbo version of this. It's a 2-liter, and I believe it makes like 248 horsepower, which is quite a bit more than what this one makes. But again, you can choose exactly what you want, front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive with this motor, or you can get more power. So it's all up to you and what you want. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I am now on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your help. One thing I wanted to say is that I just hit 14,000 subscribers. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you each and every one of my subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are the reason that this dream may even become a reality. I don't know, it may work, it may not work. So far, it seems like it's working a little bit but I'm not to my goal of 100,000 subscribers yet. So if you guys, again, are enjoying the video, thumbs up, subscribe, but let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, press on this button right here, and that will either unlock and or lock the vehicle, dependent on if the vehicle was already unlocked and or locked, which in my case, the vehicle was already unlocked, so it locked it. Press that button one more time, and that will unlock it. One beep is unlock, two beeps is lock. Uh, just something I thought I might point out. Now, I did wanna go over a couple of the functions on the key fob, starting from the top. You have your remote start function your lock function your unlock function that will open your trunk and then all the way at the bottom is where you will find your panic button you can also take out the physical key by flipping that over to the right and then pulling the physical key out at the bottom of the key fob but taking a look at the driver's side door panel i already mentioned this but that is where you'll find your blind spot monitoring system you get a satin chrome type of door looking door handle and then up top here is all vinyl wrapped you get some more of that gray trim or silver trim all of this like right here is all leather wrapped you get a nicely padded armrest you get some orange accent colored stitching you get some white accent colored stitching same thing goes for up top there as well side view mirror controls here that will restrict your passenger window privileges unlock and your lock functions and then you get an automatic up and down driver window but none of the other windows are automatic up or down little bit of miscellaneous storage space here and then you get a great spot you could set a deer park water bottle to the right of that now taking a look at the driver's seat I just wanted to say that this seat is very, very comfortable. Um, I found it to have very nice bolstering, especially for me, you know, I'm not like the thickest person. Um, so I think even if you were like 200 pounds, I think you'd still be very comfortable in this seat. You get some stitching here. You get some accenting on the center of the seat. I'm not sure how well it's gonna pick up on camera, but you get some accenting uh, down the center of the seat. You get some more of that accent colored stitching. That is your uh, eight-way power driver seat controls. And then you have your two-way lumbar to the right of those controls i do believe that the two-way lumbar does come a part of the two thousand eight hundred and ninety dollar sr premium package which it does and then also with that package you get a four-way power front passenger seat but stepping on into the interior of the ultima sr you can see that this thing is actually pretty dang upscale considering you know that this is a 30 some thousand dollar nissan so starting up top here all of this is actually leather wrapped from about like right here to here leather wrapped you get some more of that accent colored stitching in the orange and the white with that uh, sr premium package you also get some faux carbon fiber trim with that package which is this and all of this throughout here over there to the passenger side with the SRS standard. You get these paddle shifters, but I do wanna start the vehicle up so you guys can take a listen. So all you gotta do, key fob in the interior, push your foot on the brake and then push to start. 
and that is what it sounds like when it fires up and that is what it looks like when this turns on so starting over here pressing on that button will pop open your trunk these buttons here will brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. This is your trip reset button for the uh, trip information here on the screen. Now coming over here, flipping that down, you get a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. What I mean by that is that the steering wheel will go away from you, steering wheel will come towards you, and then it also moves up and down to your liking. Let's take a look at our turn signal stock. I'm gonna roll a couple windows down and get some cross flow going in here because I don't like to turn the air conditioning system. It messes up with the audio when I'm doing this part of the video. Let's take a listen to the turn signal. Some of you may be able to tell that that is a new turn signal sound for the 2023 model year. At least something that I've noticed. Uh, my mom had like a 2013 Nissan Altima uh, and I've been doing videos with a couple other you know, like brand new Nissans and they have a different sounding turn signal. They have the old sounding turn signal. This one sounds like a new turn signal. I don't know, I, this is the first Altima I've done a video with, um, but that turn signal does sound different than other Nissan products. And then you have your headlight controls here. That's off daytime running lights on, headlights always on, and headlights in the always on or automatic position. You get a leather wrapped steering wheel. Let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like. That's your downshift paddle. That is your upshift paddle. They are steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. So when you turn the steering wheel, the paddle shifters move. Then come over here, get your volume controls. Here are your uh, skip controls. So you can go back on a track, you can go forward on a track. And then these arrows, the okay button and the back button are all to control your seven inch digital productivity screen at the center of your gauges. So you get your analog gauges on the outside and then the digital screen there in the middle. And then you have your cruise control settings on the right hand side of your steering wheel. That is like some cruise control stuff. That's to speak to the vehicle and then that will bring you into your phone stuff on the screen over there. And then last but not least, that's your windshield wiper control stock. But now let's go throughout our gauges here. So this is your tachometer, also known as the RPM gauge. That's your speedometer, that's your fuel gauge, and that is your coolant temperature gauge. That's the time, that's the temperature, that's the transmission status, that's the fuel range, and then that is the odometer. Right now we have the screen set to the compass and the audio stuff. If you wanna switch between that, you can click over here, and then that will bring you into your settings. You can click over, that's some more driver assistant stuff. That's the audio stuff, that's the compass stuff, that's the information, click down once. That will bring you into your tire pressure stuff click up one more time. That's your trip information stuff. If you wanna reset the trip information here, press and hold okay, and that will reset that trip information back down to zero. And then click this over once to the left, that's fuel economy stuff, and then all the way over is uh, basically your home screen. So right now, it's got your uh, compass, it's got your, uh, your speed, and the audio stuff. I'm gonna click this down once, and then it's just the speed click it all the way down and it's basically just a calm screen. Uh, I do wanna walk you guys through a couple of the different settings things just so you can see what that looks like here. So you get your VDC settings, you can click into that. Basically traction control system. You can click over here, you can go into your driver assistance stuff. Get your emergency brake, lane, blind spot, et cetera, et cetera. You can go between all these different things. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the only couple things I wanted to show you. Uh, but again, you can adjust this screen exactly how you want it to. If this was my vehicle, this is the screen that I would leave it on personally. And then coming over to the right, again, this one has been optioned with the $2,890 SR Premium Package. And the SR Premium Package gives you this 12.3 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. So this is what the screen looks like here. Again, you may know what CarPlay looks like. so. This is one of the CarPlay screens. I love how it's just a massive screen. It's full screen Apple CarPlay. But if you wanted to go back into like the Nissan screen, you can click on this home button. And then this is what the Nissan uh, infotainment system looks like. You get your time, you get your phone stuff up top here. Um, and then you can swipe over. This is one of the screens. This is another screen, another screen. Uh, and basically you get the idea there. Then you can go between your built-in navigation stuff. Built-in navigation also comes a part of that SR premium package. You can go between your different audio stuff, basically gonna bring me back into the Apple CarPlay stuff. Uh, you also have an Apple CarPlay shortcut button right there. And then all the way down here, you can see that little square button or looks like a square. Uh, that will bring you into this app screen. So you get your different uh, things here. Uh, Tom Tom weather, where am I? Swipe this over. You get these other couple of different things. Um, and then you get your notification button all the way at the top. So you, you can see all those different shortcut buttons here that will bring you into exactly what basically it shows you, home screen navigation, uh, 
music, uh, Apple CarPlay stuff, and then that's your apps all the way at the bottom. That's kind of about it for that screen. I could spend more time on the screen, but uh, then this video might be long, but pressing on that button will bring you either into your night mode or your auto mode. Uh, those are the two different things, and then that's to go back on a track, that's to go forward on a track. This is for your volume, so you can volume up. You can volume it down, and then this will bring you into your instant camera stuff. Um, so you can see, you can turn the predictive lines on or off, and then you can also go into the display setting. So you can brighten the contrast, you can mess with the tint, the color, and the black level, etc. That's what it looks like, and then it will change depending on you know which things you change. And then coming down, hazard button, you get your two HVAC vents again. That carbon fiber trim comes with that SR premium package, and you get some silver trim beneath it coming a little bit more uh this is like your manual hvac controls so you get your fan speed here and then you have your temperature controls on that side it's uh heated front seats with two levels of adjustability also come a part of that sr premium package and that's your front defroster your rear defroster that will recycle the air on the interior with the ac system and you can point the wind in all those different directions coming down here you get a usb a port a usb c port and a 12 volt power outlet you also get a wireless charging pad right here. Wireless charging also comes a part of the SR Premium package. I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max and it fits down in there no problem. One of the bigger phones on the market and you can see that the phone starts charging when that thing right there lights up. That is to stop or start the vehicle. You also get a leather wrapped shift boot as standard with the uh, SR. So if you want to put this thing into sport mode, you see this little button right here. You click on that button and that will put you into sport mode. So right now we're in drive, click that. You can see that little S that pops up. That will turn sport mode on or off. And then pulling that all the way down, put you into low. Two cup holders here. You also have a great spot you could set to the key fob there. I love how that white and orange stitching follows throughout the entire interior. You get a nicely padded armrest that is leather wrapped. Opening this up, basically just a little bit of storage space. It's basically like a lunchbox kind of size uh, storage space down in there. I would say maybe 30% of my forearm fits down in there when this thing is closed. Coming over to here, you get a not a lockable glove box but you get a good amount of storage space in that glove box over there you get a standard rear view mirror and then you get a great spot you could set your sunglasses get driver gets a light passenger gets a light boom and boom this will turn on all the interior dome lights right there but again by the push of that button then these are your light controls whether you want the lights to turn on when you open up the doors or not and then that's your sos button you get a sunroof also with that sr premium package and it does tilt and slide so that's going to slide it that's what that looks like i'm going to close that and then i'm going to show you how to tilt it all you got to do to tilt it is push up on that and then the sunroof will tilt and vent uh, as you want it to very very nice opening up the visor it is a sliding visor you get a vanity mirror and a vanity light and like i just mentioned it does slide forwards and backwards and then over on that side this does the exact same thing as the driver but the passenger side gets an opu handle the driver side does not get an opu handle um, but that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats there are a couple things that i wanted to mention so basically i'm going to highlight the sr premium package again the sr premium package is a 2890 dollars option and what you get with that there's a lot so bear with me you get a power sliding moonroof with the tilt function you'll get leather appointed sport seats basically you get bolstering on the sides of the seats uh, because i do believe the leather appointed seats come standard with the sr um, as well as heated front seats you get the power lumbar for the driver four-way power passenger seat the wireless apple carplay the wireless android auto the 12.3 inch infotainment screen the wireless charging pad the sirius xm radio and traffic nissan connected services which is powered by sirius uh, and then you also get uh, alexa built in you get a wi-fi hotspot built in and you get built-in navigation now i'm going to go over a couple standard things that come standard with the SR trim level. So basically you get a six speaker sound system, blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, rear cross traffic alert, rear automatic braking, and, uh, and then you also get automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Now I'm gonna read over some safety ratings and the MSRP. So you guys can see the window sticker is now on screen. You can take a look at the safety ratings. Basically, I'm just gonna highlight the government safety rating. So basically you get five stars in pretty much every aspect except for the frontal crash for the passenger. Now you can take a look at all the optional stuff, all the standard stuff and so on and so forth, whatever you want to. Uh, but basically, I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Nissan Altima SR is spec'd is 
$33,065. I think considering what you get, I think this thing looks great. I think it has all the features that you really need. And really, honestly, it has the features that you don't need as well. So, um, sorry, I accidentally clicked that. But anyway, it's got pretty much every single feature that you need. You don't need any more than this. And it's very, very nice looking and it's very, very nice to sit in, very nice to drive as well. If you want a little bit more power, you're gonna to wanna to get the VC Turbo version of this, which I think is like $35,000 starting. Um, but I do wanna show you what we got going on in these rear seats before we moved into the driving portion of the video. So let's see what we got to offer back in these seats. So again, all of this area is all vinyl wrapped. All of this, what I'm pointing out with my pointer finger here is all leather wrapped. Again, you get some more of that orange and white accent colored stitching. You get a nicely padded armrest, a little bit of miscellaneous storage space down in there. And then you can also set a Deer Park water bottle in that cup holder as well. Just like the front seats, you get some more of that like uh, orange accenting going down the center of the perforated seats. And then you get some orange accent colored stitching here. And then that orange accent colored stitching with some white accent colored stitching on the seat bottoms. Stepping on into the interior, you do not get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat, but you do get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You also get a USB-A port and a USB-C port. That's a closer look at that. Opu panel over here on this side. You get another Opu panel on that side as well. Get your dome lights individually for your two rear passengers here. And then last but not least, you also get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. But I am adjusted behind myself. I am five foot nine and you can see I have plenty of leg room. I have plenty of knee room and I also have quite a bit of headroom left over as well. I think there's probably quite a bit more headroom in here than what you get in the Maxima. 2023 is the last year of the Maxima. They are killing off the Maxima. So I thought the Maxima was a awesome, awesome looking car. Um, and I was like, oh man, I'm sad that they're getting rid of it. But I'm also sad that they're getting rid of it because they're getting rid of the really good sounding V6. But I think this thing, it's not quite Maxima level, but it's Maxima is also like $45,000 for the SR. Um, this is 33. So I think this thing looks great. It's just a little bit lackluster power wise, at least with the 2.5 liter. If you get the two liter turbo, I haven't driven one, but I would assume that it got quite a bit more pep than what this has. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Ultima SR. So I want to see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right. And now on to the driving portion of the reviewer. This is honestly a delight to drive. It drives very, very nicely. Um, the only real thing about it is that it really doesn't have a ton of get up and go. Now that might not be an issue for a lot of you. Um, but for me, I always like you know a lot of power and uh, this doesn't have a lot of power it definitely has adequate power and a little bit more than adequate power like it's not like insanely anemic until you're doing like a zero to 60 test you know once you really start flooring this thing and you start getting up around you know 50 to 60 miles an hour that's kind of when you're like okay well this thing is you know you know kind of slow uh, but you know, that's kind of not the point of this. Uh, you know, I know this is more for like the look, the sporty look rather than like the sporty uh, acceleration kind of thing, but it drives very sporty. So what I mean by that is that the suspension handles turns very, very well. Like you go around turns, you're like, okay, well, I think I can push this thing harder than I just pushed it. Uh, but you know, once you start really getting into the throttle that's when you're like okay well this thing might need a little bit more power but for some of you you may be like dude i don't need more power all i want is the look and i want the fuel economy and i also want to be able to go around turns quickly and that is exactly the car for you this is exactly the car for you because it does all of those things and it does all those things very very well i mean you get insane fuel economy 27 in the city 37 on the highway that's really really good for a vehicle that looks like this that rides like this um, this is very very comfortable to drive um, but it's just it's just a really great vehicle all around you know like i said it's not like insanely anemic like it does have get up but if you're expecting like turbo level get up well obviously this is, doesn't have turbo level get up now if this is not enough power for you but you really like the way that it looks you can get the vc turbo version of this which gives you about 248 horsepower if i'm not mistaken so this makes 188 horsepower that makes 248 horsepower and if my math serves me correctly that's quite a bit more power so um 
I don't know. I think this is just a great vehicle. You know, this one gets really good fuel economy. So if you want the look, you want the fuel economy, this is the one to get. If you want the look, but you also want the power to back up the look, then you might want to get the VC turbo. It actually, funny enough, is a smaller motor. It's a two liter turbo. This is a two and a half liter naturally aspirated motor. Uh, but honestly, like I said, this thing, it, it's not like insanely anemic. However, for me, I do like just a little bit more power, but you know, when you put this thing into sport, it does give you a little bit more get up and go. You know, the throttle response is better and stuff like that. Um, so overall, I mean, this thing rides really well. Uh, paddle shifter response will test here in a minute. I haven't tested it out yet, uh, but we, you know, right now we are. Uh, I just flipped the paddle and now we're in first gear. So we will test that here in a minute. Uh, but, you know, I think a lot of you guys are going to be doing this with your Ultima SR, you know, sitting in traffic, going home from work, getting to school, stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of where this thing shines. You know, it cruises very well, but it also sits in traffic well. Uh, there's no like jolting or jerking from the CVT that I've heard some people complain about uh, with the Subaru Legacy. You know, the, it's a little bit jerky. I haven't really experienced that, but I have heard uh, from owners' experiences that uh, it is a little bit jerky at low speeds with the Subaru Legacy. Again, I'm not talking about the Altima. This is not jerky. I haven't noticed any jerkiness uh, with the engagement of you know the CVT or getting up and going at all. Uh, it's just been very, very smooth. We'll see where this person goes, but I might jolt out right here real quick. And uh, again, we're going to test the paddle shifter response again right now. I am in first gear and then I'm just going to basically, well, I guess we'll floor it. Why not? Paddle shifter response. There's probably like a, there's a little bit of a delay, but when I got on it, I was like, okay, like the initial bite was pretty good. But if, again, if you're expecting this thing to feel like insanely quick, um, you know, that this isn't, this isn't the vehicle for that. But again, if this was my vehicle, I probably just put it in drive and put it into sport mode and then it's got the it's got the getup that you want you know it's actually got pretty good low end torque I know the numbers may not suggest that it's like insanely quick or anything and it's not insanely quick but it does have enough get up and go to where you're not going to feel like this thing needs more power uh, it really it doesn't need any more power than it has but for me I always like additional power so the VC turbo is definitely you know something that I would at least look into I've never driven one um, I would like to drive one just to compare the two to see, you know, how much is that power really worth? You know what I mean? Is it really worth the additional, you know, five grand uh, over this? So that is something that I would like to test and I will test as time goes on once I get my hands on one. But, you know, again, if you guys are not really care care that much about power this is a really really good vehicle because it's comfortable these seats are very comfortable the sound system is actually surprisingly good for a standard sound system it is a six speaker sound system and i was actually surprised you know that's something that surprised me sometimes about nissans is that you know comparing this to like a bose sound system obviously the bose is obviously better uh but i think you'd be surprised by how good the standard sound system is uh, on nissans it's actually quite surprising i'm gonna floor it So that, that was floored. You can see, kind of feel what the acceleration is like. And honestly, between shifts, that's kind of when it kind of gives you a little kick in the butt to, you know, just continue on moving. So uh, body roll test, let's test it out. There is a little bit of body roll, but again, it's got the sport tuned suspension. So it actually does handle surprisingly well when you do the body roll test, like it's, it stays surprisingly flat which is always nice um, so again this does have a sporty driving feel like you can tell that it has a sport tuned suspension it does ride a little bit more firm uh, than some of the other Ultima trim levels but again that's something that I would look for in a vehicle you know I always like a vehicle that's gonna handle well um, I kind of live in you know an area where you want it to handle well uh, because you know there are curves and twisties and stuff like that and I personally really enjoy my time driving uh, around turns and stuff so I think for me at least a sport tuned suspension or a suspension that handles like this is pretty much imperative at least for me and I, I know that the Nissan wouldn't make this a vehicle if it wasn't imperative to a lot of other people as well so overall I really like the way that this thing looks I really like the way that it drives it drives very nicely you know it's not too stiff but it's it's got enough stiffness to where it actually handles pretty well around turns and stuff like that so this is definitely probably one of the ultimate if I was looking at an Ultima this 
may be the trim level that I would get. You know, if I didn't want to spend, you know, $38,000 because, you know, $35,000 is about the base price of the VC Turbo SR. So you're really probably looking at something around $38,000 with a couple tasteful options and stuff like that. So for a daily, you know, if you have a second car that's fast, you know, and this is just going to be your daily driver, then this is probably the one that I would get. You know, I have a 2010 Camaro, so I don't really need, um, an insanely quick daily so this would be totally fine for me you know again it's got enough power to where you don't feel like it's anemic you know that's the best way that i can kind of describe the power level um it's just a really great vehicle overall and i really really like this gray sky pearl uh which is a new color for 2023 so if you guys are interested in this particular one i'll have james's information in the description box down below but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button like i said i'm now on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot get there without your help i also wanted to thank you again for helping me get to 14,000 subscribers so each and every one of my subscribers thank you from the bottom of my heart you guys are really helping me get to my dream uh, or helping me get to making my dream come true of doing this you know as a career and actually making like really really good money you know money is really not everything for me you know I love doing this on a day-to-day -day basis there's really no other job that I would rather do but it is still work it is still a job so um, I would really appreciate it and it would really benefit my channel if you guys would give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button but again that's it for today's video I will catch you guys in the next one peace